Hey, we're here with Green Machine Comics, and uh, we're going to go over our picks for the week. It's been a weird week, but a really, really good week for comics. Really good week. And I tried to, to throw more Marvel into the mix, because, you know, I'm DC biased. So we have a lot of books to go over, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, first, we have the Fantastic Four Wedding Special, which was actually a really loving thing. I think, how long have they been uh, a couple? I forget. It's like 30 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. 30 years. And uh, this is the wedding special. And in it, there is a bachelor party that goes about as wild as you can go. And I don't mean like in the bachelor party sense. I mean in the superhero sense. <laughs> and then, you know, there's like a, a rather loving exchange between, uh, uh, well, Ben and um, his stepfather-in-law, who is the puppet master. So, <laughs> but... Uh, it was actually a really good read. I had a good time with this. I think if you're a collector or you're a Fantastic Four collector or a Fantastic Four fan or even a Marvel fan, this is probably one you should pick up. Uh, don't expect a terrible amount of depth to it. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of adventure. It's not a lot of deep. Um, but it was really, really good. And I think it's, a, it's something a collector is going to want. So next we have the macro series Raphael TMNT. Now, I, I'm a gigantic TMNT fan. We've talked about this before. Uh, I, don't feel, I feel like these books don't get enough love these days, and these especially because they really remind me of the old sort of original series. Um, the Raf is, in my opinion, the weakest of all the other books. I mean, it, it does a lot to, to go over Raf's rage and everything else, but the other books felt really good. I mean, like, uh, Mikey, I think, even went up against Splinter <laughs> to make a statement. Uh, Donnie was, was a very tech-centric one. Um, Leo, obviously, was dealing with, like, issues with, with leadership and stuff. Um, Raph was probably the weakest, although it does have kind of a, a heartfelt story between Raph and Casey. It shows, like, you know, their, their brotherly love. Um, so I didn't hate it. I, I just felt it was like the least strong of all the macro series. Which, when you're buying these, you're buying pretty much a graphic novel. I mean, they're seven ninety nine, but they're a very large book, and the art is beautiful. And it's still, I had a really good time with all the macro series stuff. So if you like Team NT, you should be collecting these to begin with. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of a must buy for a Team NT fan. Everyone else, if you're not into Team NT, you need to skip it. Uh, next, we had Goddess Mode, and I want to gush about this book for a minute because this book is all types of amazing. Um, I would say it's it's one part Neil Stevenson's Snow Crash, uh, one part, um, God, like Neuromancer, and uh, oh, oh, uh, Ramiz Nam's uh, Crux and Nexus series, Nexus, Crux, and I can't remember the third one. Uh, it's got that, and it's it's like one part magic. It was really, 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 really good. A very strong showing for number one. I think everyone should go run out and pick this up. Um, basically, it's about a world that is uh, a cyberpunk sort of utopia, I guess, if you can call cyber. It's still kind of a dystopia. Um, basically, everyone has nanomachines, and the nanomachines in their brains let them see the net around them. Uh, and, and so you can get bombarded with advertisements, you, you could pay for premium internet, and all the internet is like controlled by a, uh, an AI that is ran by a big corporation. And unfortunately for most of the people, there is an unknown disease that is infecting people that just sort of puts them into like a coma, coma state. So they put people in stasis to sort of protect them. And they say that they're looking for the cure, but they're not actually looking for the cure. And it goes from there. It gets, it gets further. Like magic is introduced. But it's a really, really deep story. And it really is a blending of concepts. It does feel like... Because like, Snow Crash had this kind of disease. And Nexus had those kind of like, the, like uh, nanomachines in your mind, like controlling your, your feelings and your images and stuff like that. And it, it combines all of that. It, it is a really strong showing. And the art is beautiful, too. I, I would say for everyone, this is probably my pull of the week. Um, I think everyone should run out and get this book. Uh, next is Batman Who Laughs. And it's weird to say that that's my pull of the week on the week that Batman Who Laughs came out. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we're getting noise from the mall. Um, 
So this was a really, really good book and really messed up. It ends in probably the most messed up way imaginable. And I can't spoil it for you, but I really want to talk about it. So we'll talk about it in the issue too. Um, but it opens with, uh, well, Bruce Wayne trying to figure out a mystery. And or I should say Batman trying to figure out a mystery. And um, Batman who laughs um, breaks into Arkham and goes to kill a Joker, which is sort of in one of the preview pages that you can already see. Yeah. And it involves the other Batman. They're calling him uh, the Grim Knight. And he's basically Batman if Batman was Punisher. Oh, wow. So he's got like a bunch of guns and stuff like that. And I can't say more about this without spoiling it. There's a mystery. Uh, there's going to be an epic battle. And it's really messed up how they're setting this stage. I, I The ending was a little shocking for me. I, I don't know how I feel about it. I can't wait to see more. <laughs> so nothing to do with Tom King's run right now? I don't think so. I'm not sure that it's in the same universe at all. It could be. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, I mean, it could be. Batman Who Laughs, as far as I know, is only in the main universe. So it might be in the main universe but i don't know it it feels disjointed it feels separated huh. um for good reason the the mystery is is very strange and on top of that um the what what happens to batman is even more strange and i'm not sure that i i'm not sure that there's going back from this uh so it it makes me wonder if it's in the same universe uh, something else is in play here and okay. i'm not quite sure what it is um, gotcha. <laughs> next is the Batman Annual. Uh, I guess it's the third annual since uh, Rebirth started. So Batman Annual number three. And this one is an absolute must buy. I, I think this is a uh, this is a real father and son story between Alfred and Batman. And it's as told from Alfred's point of view, which I really, really love. And there are times where we, we've discussed that, you know, Alfred... Is, is not he's not a, a giant pushover he's not as strong as no. Batman by any means but he's been trained in some fighting styles and obviously if he helped help Bruce with his talent too so uh that that shows in this and I'm glad they did this I had a really really good time with this book um and it, it made me it made me miss my dad which you know is, is, is the signs of a really really good story so I mm, I don't know if, if you like those kind of feels if you want to feel those kind of feels, I, I think you need to go pick up uh, this Batman annual. And this was by uh, Taylor, written by Taylor. Hmm. So, nice. yeah. Nice. Kind of wild. Had a good time with it. Didn't expect to have that good of a... Next is Suicide Squad. This is Rick Flagg, part of Rick Flagg's story. And uh, he's, he's going up against Amanda Waller, kind of. But there's some other evilness in play in the form of a fire elementals type disease type thing. And it involves characters from his past. It was a little hard to follow. I jumped in on Suicide Squad. I hadn't been following it for a while. Um, and I'm not sure I'm totally invested in this story. I think if you're a Suicide Squad fan, you're obviously going to dive in on this. But this is not a good jumping off point for people that aren't Suicide Squad fans. So as much as it pains me to say something like that, but it's not. I don't think that's a good book to pick up if you're starting out with Suicide Squad. Um, next is the Red Sonia Holiday Special. And we, we did the other Red Sonia Holiday Special on Halloween, Halloween yeah. and I had a good time with it, mm -hmm. which uh, I, I was equally shocked that I had a good time with this one. Uh, it sort of follows Red Sonia, and she's got a tale about visiting our world with somebody um, and experiencing Christmas, and, and I had a really good time. I would say the first story was really great, and in keeping with the... Uh, the theme of the uh, last holiday special. First story was really great. Second story, not so great. <laughs> not so great. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty sure they're doing it on purpose. Like they grab, you know, the maybe best and the, worst. the best and the worst. Yeah. They put it together. So, nah, it's it's fully skippable if you're not into Red Sonja or Conan. Uh, I'm really excited about the new Conan book coming. Well, I mean, they're both popping off, what, 2019? Yeah. Right at the beginning of the year. But is it, isn't Conan coming on Marvel? Yes. I think it is, yes. right? Not Dynamite. Not Dynamite. So he's going on Marvel. He's going on Marvel. So I, I can't wait to see what that yeah. showing's like. Um, so I, I still had a good time with this. If, you do, if you're looking for a holiday book that's not quite a typical holiday book, good pick. Next we have Supergirl. Who weeps for Krypton? Uh, I don't know what to say about this. Oh, I really no. wanted to <laughs> like it. Um, Supergirl's had a run where she's found out that the Lantern Corps was sort of involved in the, the destruction of Krypton, or at least sort of knew about, knew about it. it yeah. um, she uh, is 
sort of navigating to Krypton and trying to deal with investigating Krypton at the same time being overwhelmed by the radiation, which they call K-Rad, <laughs> which I think is funny because K-Rad is like an old hacker speak like slang term for really awesome. Uh, so I, I thought it was weird. They keep saying K-Rad throughout the thing, and I was like <laughs> <laughs> just laughing. The 90s hacker in me was laughing. Um, but it's weird. There's like a lot of people that worked on this book, and I really wanted to like it and didn't like it. I like the art. I, I Do really you feel the like the art. Maybe it was setting up some backstory. Or anything? I was definitely setting some stuff up, but it was it was weird because it was split up into two stories. And the guy that's running around with her, it's partially his story. I can't remember his name. It's gonna drive me nuts. Uh, Zinderkoll, Zinderkoll, mm. uh, uh, green skin fella. I, I hadn't been following enough of it to know who he was, um, but I don't know. Just didn't have the best time with it. It wasn't as fun as those ones where she was like going, going to Mogo and like mm -hmm. fighting through the Green Lantern Corps and stuff like that. I wanted to see that again. I guess you can't get that every issue, but it, it's so weird. Like they designed it up there. They they I, this says it's an extra sized anniversary issue, which I missed the first time, which is why you probably get two stories. So maybe it's the two story thing. You, you get two stories. One of them's pretty good. One of them's meh, 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 meh. maybe it's the Red Sonia pattern. <laughs> I don't know. Um, next is Champions, and I had heard that they're relaunching Champions. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, that's pretty much all I heard on it. I kind it's of so think I need a sip real fast. <laughs> hmm. I kind of heard they're relaunching Champions. I'm not sure why. This is a wholly fun run for, for somebody who's never been into Champions. I've had a pretty good time with this run. Um, currently, they're sort of trapped in, I think it's another universe that's a fantasy universe. I hadn't been paying attention to the fantasy stuff. They don't know who each other is. Uh, the only one that knows is Ironheart. She's got to kind of awaken the rest of them. They are straight up like witches and knights and wizards, like type type weird stuff. Okay. Um, oh, hence the, uh, the yeah the there, armor huh? and the, <laughs> the reptile soldiers and Nova Star is like a straight up like I, I mean he's not Nova Star he's Nova um, is he Nova? Is Nova I can't remember <laughs> I, I can't keep the champions straight. But I, I had a good time with this book. I had a really, really good time with this book. Um, I, I haven't read enough Champions. I, I kind of want to read more. Um, but I heard that their series is going to get a soft reset. And I, I can't imagine why. I mean, it's not flying off the shelves. But uh, this is a totally good super team that people are not buying. Uh, so good book. I don't know. If you're a Marvel fan, I would say pick it up and dip your toes in it. If you're a DC fan, eh, maybe it's not your cup of tea. But it... I, the, the team sort of feels a little more DC to me at times than it does Marvel. I don't know why. Hmm. Um, next is the Typhoid Fever Iron Fist run. So Typhoid Mary has, has been doing this with all the other, like, um, I want to say, well, I want to say Defenders, but, like, let's see. Who all's been in it? Yeah. Who all? There's definitely a Spider-Man's been in it. Um, there's a Spider-Man Typhoid Mary. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember who the other characters yeah. are in it. But this one, obviously, is Iron Fist, Typhoid Mary. Um, and so basically, uh, she's been supercharged by somebody who can who can jolt powers. And originally, he was supposed to sort of quash, or squash uh, Typhoid Mary out of her. Instead, he gave her, like, a, 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 a kick. He gave her powers a kick. So she is, like, an overdrive, and she is completely torturing all of the, the Hell's Kitchen. And meanwhile, like, the X-Men have been called in, and currently uh, Iron Fist has been called in. And I had a really good time with this. Um, I'm not a giant Danny Rand fan by any means. Um, I really didn't like the Iron Fist series, the TV series, the, the first season. I've never been too invested in the character in the comics. Um, but i got to tell you, his suit is so aesthetically pleasing. I love the way, like, the Iron classic, Fist yeah. looks, right? Um, it's, there's something really cool about it. Uh, but I had a good time with this book. I had a good time with this character. It wasn't, I don't think it's a good jumping off point for the, the Typhoid Mary event. I think you should go back and read some other stuff before you start with this, because this is kind of the conclusion. Um, but it's, it's a wholly good book. You, I think you could jump in with it and not be terribly confused. Um, I was kind of shocked. I, I thought this was going to be sort of throwaway, like filler type stuff. And it wasn't. I had a good time. It was a it was a darn good adventure. Yeah, so. the other typhoid was uh, X Men. 
was the other one with yeah. Spider-Man, yeah. And, and now we need to talk about something else that I thought was wholly throwaway okay. before this. Uh, and that Sleepwalker oh. from the Infinity Warps it's event. Like, we were like Infinity holding Wars, our breath on this Infinity one. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, Sleepwalker's weird because he's like a 90s character that was dusted off for this Infinity Wars, Infinity Warps event. Mm -hmm. And he, every single one of his books has felt like filler. Every single one has felt like filler. Like they just threw a story in for for the event. And it's weird because the character's really, really cool. The character, like... Has, has to bond to a human, so he's, he's bonded to this guy named Rick, and he sort of has to like bounce back and, back and forth between the dream world and the real world to handle stuff. And in this, he's sort of doing his thing. Uh, meanwhile, Rick is like combined with uh, uh, Nick Fury. Oh, wow. Good old Nick Fury. Um, so it's, again, it still felt like filler. It didn't feel like... A, it was a kind of a good fight. It was a good adventure at the end, um, but it didn't. It really didn't feel necessary. The, the the whole run of Sleepwalker and the Infinity Wars event hasn't felt necessary. But he does something cool at the end. Okay. And and what's more important was uh, all of the characters that, that were against him in the very beginning. Uh -huh. Like I guess that they they're gonna have ties to other humans too. So You're talking about that dream universe, yeah, okay. about that dream universe. So I I was wholly interested in that. I think the characters are a really cool concept. I didn't know about this character before. I, I don't know how I missed it. Everybody I've talked to that, that read comics in the nineties was like, oh yeah, Sleepwalker. I know that character. I was like, I, I had no idea. Um, but I I want to know more about the character. And I want to see him in some other story. I don't want any more of him <laughs> in the Infinity Wars event. Uh, I, although, I will say the art is really good. Really, really good. Okay. And the artist drawing it like got that really cool dream effect uh, stuff. So I, I had a good time with the art. I just didn't have a good time with the story. Um, but, yeah, I want to see more from that character. Uh, next is, well, it's the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the Avengers... And if you can see from the cover, uh, Thor and She-Hulk are in love. Aww. 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 Precious. And he sort of goes on a date, but he doesn't go on a date with She-Hulk. He goes on a date with her, uh, um, God, what is She-Hulk's real name? Jen? I forget her name. <laughs> it's going to drive me nuts. Um, okay, so anyways, he goes on a date with her, and it doesn't really work out all that well. It works out how you'd expect it to work out with Thor. Uh, yeah, Jen, I got it right. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it works out about how you expect. You know, they're hanging out and there's like awkward silence, and then Thor's like, "Yo, I'm gonna go lift that boulder," and she's like, "This, this date sucks." <laughs> and uh, so I guess Thor is is kind of uh, in love with the Hulk aspect of her, and is sort of coming to terms with how to handle the Jen aspect of her. Hmm. And it was kind of an interesting read. I had a good time with it. Uh, yeah, the, okay. let's let's talk about the other part of the story, which is way more dark and more sinister. Coulson is back from the dead, and Coulson has had enough of the Avengers crap. And, uh, yeah, no joke, he is angry, and he's on the side of the United States, and he's making it very clear he's not on the side of the Avengers, and he's even got a new super team All he's right. not talking about. So, my question for you is, yeah. have you been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I haven't. Oh, man. Yeah, I haven't okay. watched Agents well, then of I S.H.I.E.L.D. I can't pick your brain on this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, he is... Uh, 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 is I can't is, imagine anything more an scary. Is earthquake involved? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe. Okay, so as I was saying, maybe. There, there might have been mention of an earthquake in Alaska, I think. Okay. But there, there is definitely a new super team in play, um, and they're... I'm sure they're they're building towards a fight with the Avengers, and I can't imagine anything more scary than a pissed off Coulson. <laughs> like, yeah, he, uh, he's pretty BA. He's not OP, but he's he, BA. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to speak so, in acronyms, yeah, that's a good way. He's he's not OP, but he's BA. Uh, I like that. Um, so that's the Avengers. I, I think people should be paying attention to the Avengers because they had the 10,000 BC Avengers mm -hmm. uh, a few which issues was back, really cool. which was really awesome, Ghost Rider. like Ghost Rider on a mammoth and stuff like <laughs> that. Um, that's, that's so <laughs> everything they're doing with this Avengers book is amazing. And what's more important is I think it's pretty good for kids. I, I don't recommend too many super teams for kids because some of them are sort of hit or miss with, mm -hmm. with being adult more adult-themed. Yeah. Although Coulson 
I don't, I don't want to spoil it. He's a little, a little cruel in this. But uh, the Avengers run has been darn fun. Okay. So I don't know why more people aren't paying attention to this. Uh, okay, let's let's talk about Spider Geddon, Spider Gwen, Go Spider. I think we're falling victim to the Marvel uh, event syndrome oh, where they no. draw out no. events too long. Not Gwen. Yeah, I oh, love no. Spider Gwen. I love Spider Gwen. I'm not having fun with this. So uh, Gwen has found herself in another universe, stranded. She needs uh, her version of herself. She has to find her version of herself and and help help pull her away from being the Green Goblin and being evil and stuff like that because the other Gwen is the Green Goblin in this universe. And she has to do it in order to find her way back home. And uh, it's because she needs her to sign some stuff up. I guess is the story. And this story feels completely like filler. All you need to know is that she gets... She, she, she eventually finds her way back to where she needs to go. And sadly, it wasn't that fun. Did, did it at least tie into the rest of the spider get in? Or is this like a side quest? It's a total side quest. Damn. Total side quest. Um, so, mm, 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 kind of a miss. If you're, if you're collecting the spider get event, you're going to want it. If you're a Marvel fan, it's wholly skippable. And it pains me to say that about uh, spider Gwen because I love her stuff. Next, we're going to talk about Silver Surfer in the best defense. Because they're building towards the Defenders. And I read the Nam uh, Namor. 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 Yes, i got to pronounce yes, that right. Yes, yes. Uh, I read the Namor one. Had a good time. This is the Silver Surfer one. It does not tie into the name. Okay. So that ending is what I'm talking about. That ending is still weird. Okay. Mm. But uh, <coughs> um, I'm really, I'm sort of torn. I didn't have the best time with the story. Although I like seeing exchanges between Galactus and... And Silver Surfer, mm -hmm. that always entertains me. And there's like a new threat on the horizon, so that's cool. But um, didn't have the best time with the story. But they're building towards the Defenders, which is really, really cool. And I think people should be super excited about this. And more importantly, um, this art is really fun. I, I, had it. I love the art. The art reminds me of like a, a 90s comic feel. Nice. Like a late 90s comic feel. And so did the name on one. And I'm pretty sure, judging by the Hulk cover, that there's that one. But they're doing, they're basically doing every character that's going to be in the Defenders. They're sort of building up to the uh, first issue of the Defenders. So I think if you, if you like this team or if you want to get on board with the Defenders and you've never jumped in before, uh, now's a really, really good time. So let's go on to Mr. and Mrs. X. And I read this because... Um, I'm not a giant X-Men fan. I'm not a giant Mutants fan. I've, I've never been a huge Mutants fan. Growing up, my buddy Corey was always really into the X-Men, uh, and I was always really into, like, Batman and, you know, DC stuff mm -hmm. and Green Lantern. Green Lantern. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, this is a total slice-of-life comic, but it's a slice-of-life of mutants that are X-Men. Okay. <laughs> so so there's there's quite a bit of adventure along with the, the mundane stuff. And you know what it feels like to me? Huh. It feels like a, a sort of a different version of the uh, Mr. Miracle. Oh, okay. Not quite as funny. Just a little bit of that zaniness. Yeah, there, huh? just, just a little bit. But, you know, a wild sort of slice of, li slice of life adventure. Um, I had a good time with it. I had a really good time with it. Is there a vegetable dish? With no, vegetables? there's no vegetable dish with, with Dark Side. Um, which and and Mr. Miracle made me laugh out loud. Funny. Mm -hmm. This just made me like mm, like like kind of smile, be a little happy. Okay. It's it's not a bad book. Uh, worth picking up. But it's you're basically watching newlyweds or newlyweds deal with life and deal with being mutants. Okay. So I had a good time with it. Okay. Uh, next is X23. I should preface this by saying I just said I just talked a lot ahead about mutants, but there's a character in this story that I really, really do love, and, and that is Honey Badger. Honey Badger. <laughs> Honey Badger is one of my favorite characters right now, and uh, Don't she. Give up. Yeah, <laughs> she. Uh, she is definitely um, the one of the. Well, she's one of the. Um, I don't know clutch hitters in this story. And she's often a clutch hitter, which is part of why I like her. Um, so this is basically they're, they're encountering a new threat, and they move to handle it, and uh, Honey Badger gets involved, and then they discover something about that threat. And I can't 
I can't say anything else or I'm gonna spoil it. It's the worst part. But Honey Badger's in play. That's really all you need to know about this X-23. So uh, I had a good time with this. X-23 is... Um, I, I, I hate to say it after talking all that head and not being on board with all the X-Men stuff, except I had a really good time with the Uncanny X-Men. Um, had a really good time with this book. Uh, people should be reading X-23. I don't know why more people are not reading X-23. Uh, that was a good time. Gets to the weirdest book on the list. Uh, uh, a baby Spawn, right? <laughs> baby Spawn, and it says Spawn Kills Everyone Part 2. Uh, baby Spawn has a problem. Uh, a problem not very different from my problems, where he's eating uh, too much junk food. <laughs> too much junk food, too much candy. And because of it, he gets... He gets really bad gas. He goes to the doctor. He gets. He goes and sees every doctor in the Marvel universe. Doctor Strange, Doctor Fate. None of that makes sense. Okay. Like Doctor Strange literally They're prescribes him pills. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Doctor Strange was though, wasn't he? Yeah. He was, but uh, he he sees Doc Ock. He sees. It's it's weird. It's a weird <laughs> okay. book. It's a weird book. And uh, this problem leads to him having gas, and the gas leads to him birthing babies out of his butt. That's where babies come from. I guess that's where spawn <laughs> babies come from. This is a weird book. This is a weird, 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 weird book. Now, there are varying and levels of weird. Is it fun weird? I don't know if it's fun weird. The art's really cool. The art is dope. Like, the art is amazing. Uh, the art is amazing. Um, the book is weird. Uh, if, if, if you like lowbrow humor... You really like lowbrow humor, fart, and, and poop jokes type stuff, that you will have a darn good time with this book. Um, if you like cohesion and decent story, not so much. Okay. <laughs> not so much. It's a weird book. Um, <laughs> next is Vampironica. Vampironica, or as we like to refer to her, um, Buffy 2. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, if, you, if, if you missed it last time, they... they fill a pool with holy water and they're basically sta fighting away the, zo or the vampires they're, they're in the pool hiding from the vampires that are outside of the pool that start to drain the pool so they got problems meanwhile uh, Vampironica is going off to fight the head vampire who is giving her illusions as she's trying to like, like sure. go and it, it's really really good whoever wrote this uh, had a very big love for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I have to say that because this is Buffy. Like this is completely a Buffy story. <laughs> and uh, so it ends. They're wrapping up her mini series, and I don't recommend. You can jump in on it and not be too confused. Um, I don't recommend doing that. I think you should wait for the trade or go start at the beginning. Uh, we probably have back issues we can fill you in on. Yeah. Um, but the what else is going on is there's Jughead the Hunger, where Jughead's a werewolf and Moose is Frankenstein, and that is building. They 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 preface that at the end of this. Oh really? There's going to be a an encounter between Vampironica and Jughead the Hunger. Wow! Uh, so a lycanthrope vampire yeah. trying to square off, huh? Yeah. So the Archie Madhouse series is taken off, and I'm glad it is because I love this kind of stuff. Uh, I need to see more stuff like this. Like, do the Buffy-inspired stories. They're great. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's a must-buy. At least get the trade. Um, next, we're on to Bitterroot, and I, I love this. I was I, hoping you would. I love everything about this. <laughs> I love... It's, it's a sign of the times, for one thing. Um, so they expand on the whole, like, monsters, which they call them Ju... 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 News? Ju... I, I can't remember what they call them. Ju, ju, it's some word. It's some word. And basically it means monster, like they're infected. And they generally fight these monsters and then they they uh, give them a potion of some kind or something and they turn them back to normal. But um, the, the reality is that the... Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's a reality. They're, they're, they were using the monsters as a metaphor for racism and then they used them as an outright, in-your-face representation of racism. Full-blown one. Oh. And in fact, at the end of the last issue, they 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 encounter a bunch of like um, clansmen wearing robes and, and stuff. Oh, really? And and one dude like like straight up like like kills all of them that are the monsters. And, and that's how the beginning of this one opens. And and he says that he's not curing racism; he's amputating racism. And and there's there's one dude that didn't turn into a monster, and he's like because. 
He's like, your soul is pure, but but you are walking a terrible path. And that dude actually goes to help him, oh, which wow. I kind of liked. Okay. You know? Yeah, a redemption and, going on. And, like, so we're, we're talking, like, racism is a real problem in our world in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, this feels wholly appropriate for our times, even though it takes place in, what, the 50s, I think? 40s? Um, 20s? 20s. 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 Sorry. 20s. I need to get my times right. Um, but uh, this character, this this big dude that, that fights all the monsters and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that dude makes me laugh so much throughout this story. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of... Um, uh, uh, who Who is the guy that played the boss man in, um, in um, Pulp Fiction? Oh. Uh, uh, what was the boss man's name in Pulp Fiction? Uh, I haven't seen it in so long. Uh, oh, this is going to burn me up. Just uh, 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 look like a what's his name? Yeah, Marcellus Wallace. Marcellus Wallace. Yes, he reminds me of Marcellus Wallace. The way the way this character delivers punchlines, mm -hmm. like just totally reminds me of, of Marcellus Wallace. And and uh, so this book has a lot of humor in the, in the fight scenes. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of depth. Uh, it's telling a story that's totally appropriate for our times. And best of all, the art is amazing. Like, I haven't been so excited for a book like this with this kind of art since Dead Rabbit, uh, which was another image book. Oh, my God, if you're not reading Bitter Root, I, I, something's wrong with you right now. Like, this book is great. Uh, so I would say this is a must-buy for everyone across the board. I don't know. I had a really good time with this book. Um, and I, I want to see more from this story. I want to see more from these characters. Right there with uh, you. I, I want to buy Bitterroot merchandise. They better have shirts coming up because <laughs> I want to get some. Um, okay, next is Giant, da Giant Days. And Giant Days is a total slice of life book that, that never, it, it doesn't take itself seriously. And then it does take itself seriously, but then it doesn't take itself taking itself seriously, seriously. It's weird to say. Giant Days is a very weird book on the shelf, and yet. It's been going for a while. This is issue number 45. Um, so this one is talk, tackling like new love and what do you do when you meet, when the person you're falling in love with turns out to be a, a person with a problem where they, they drink so much they become a monster. Hmm. And, and how do you handle it? And they're sort of tackling it now. And it's comical. Like she shows up in his house like they compare her to She-Hulk. Okay. And, and she's just being a drunk, like, destroying stuff. But she just sort of wanted to see him, and she wanted a sandwich, too. And, okay. and like, it's, it's, uh, I had a really good time with it, and I think it's something you can kind of relate to. Um, okay. What, what happened? Go, go. Battery's oh. dying. Oh, battery's dying. Battery's dying. Oh, Gotta go, go, get through go. some books. Uh, Batman, Detective Comics. I had a really good time with this book. Um, go, there, go, go, go. There, there uh, needs to be more Detective Comics in my life. Uh, God. Go away from a thousand. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, we're four more away from a thousand. Uh, six more away from a thousand, you oh, mean? six more. Um, so basically, Batman discovers his parents, uh, uh, clones of his parents, not really his parents, but they've been drowned in an aquarium. And they've also got bullet holes in the head, and they look just like them. And uh, Gordon's there, and they're a little shocked, so they're investigating that. Uh, okay, next one, go. Next one, Batman Damned. We're, we're running out of time. Batman Damned is brilliant. Yes. Everybody needs to go out and buy this book. Uh, it is just as brilliant as the last one. Maybe more so. I don't know. Um, uh, what else can I say? The art is really good. Whoever is writing this can really turn a phrase. They turn a phrase so well. And I know they're using Constantine as the unreliable narrator, but uh, it's great. It's great. It totally works out. Um, and I guess that's it. Okay. Yay, we made Yay! it!